namaskaram uh, today i would like to take on this large topic a short history of uh, hinduism um so it looks like for thousands of years uh, hinduism was practiced in the continent of jambu dwipa uh, jambu dwipa covers india but also asia southeast asia east asia parts of russia uh, yeah um and then bharatavarsha india is one of the nine parts of uh, the jambu dwipa so there is historical evidence for this uh, of hindu practice certainly in cambodia in indonesia and indonesia is almost a living culture in vietnam in in russia through their language in some places and etc etc so historic so we can trace the hinduism to the large to asia primarily to east asia to southeast asia and uh, india as jambu dwipa mm? uh, so it looks like the religion practice here was the vedic religion so it was uh, created by the rishis so these were uh, people who were advanced in their uh, understanding of the universe they heard how the universe uh, manifested they heard the voice of the god of brahma and they were able to translate this into the vedas and uh, handed it on to the human beings to protect the human beings through time so the religion hinduism is rishi sthapana created by the rishis and what is beautiful is that in this uh, little island of bali that i'm in currently they have their own rishis and their vedic religion is very different from the vedic religion practiced in india so it's clear for me that uh, uh, that the whole jambu dwipa had its own rishis in different places and they interpreted and translated the the sound of the god the vedas through uh, different means and they created this structure in society of course through the grace of the god the god is the ambal yeah the ambal is the veda so while this continued for a few thousand years and maybe in bali it continues to now it's one of the purest of the vedic societies and vedic cultures i've seen in india it didn't it didn't go that well meaning there were periods in which other religions took prominence or started to come and this was especially around the time of buddhism where we are very i mean we know much about buddhism but there were also apparently 72 other religions which had taken form so the vedic religion declined this was around um 500 bc bc before christ 500 bc the vedic religion seems to have degraded into the society seemed degraded and there were 72 other religions including mimamsa nyaya etc etc buddhism jainism etc etc so at that time um shankaracharya seems to have come okay sorry before this uh, the rishi i think already a few cent or i don't know how many thousand years before india has a tradition of the puranas the rishis gave us the 18 puranas now these puranas i don't find in indonesia um or maybe i don't know yet but i don't find this puranic culture there so much as i find it in india and nepal so and sri lanka so there in india uh, after the vedic times there is the puranic times where all the deities and the relationship between the deities are clearly given to us by the by the rishis maybe because we were in from my interpretation is we weren't pure enough to uh, trust the nature gods like indra surya Mit- amitra varuna anymore and we needed the puranas the physical deities and the rishis gave us that so this was the puranic times then uh, uh, years go on go on go on go on and then again a degradation of the vedic religion which is when the buddhism comes up and uh, 72 other religions now in hinduism what happens is just after this uh, around 400 i think early 500 bc already i think just after the buddha shankaracharya adi shankaracharya takes birth and uh, he seems to be the one who is the primary sort of cause in again consolidating hinduism all around india first of all he travels deeply but he also combines so 
the different Puranas have ha have different deities, and then the Hindu the Hinduism seems to have have like uh, many. I, I only pray to Ganesha. I only pray to Shiva. Like this many divisions, and so Shankaracharya unites the the bhakti practice, the devotee practice, into the uh, Shadmada Shadmadam. Six. Shad, Shad Mother Stapanar, yes. So six of the deities, the Shiva, the Ambal, Vishnu, Ganesh, Kartike and Surya, he seems to have combined all of this into uh, Shad Madam, united the worship and called all of these people Hindus. Not just this, on the philosophical side, he seems to have gone around and uh, uh, debated with the Mimamsa, uh, the 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 teachers of Mimamsa, Jaina, etc., etc. Some of it, the, the debate with Kumari Labatta is famous. The uh, yeah, so Shankaracharya seems to have uh, resolved issues on the philosophical front as well as the devotional front, and again consolidated Hinduism. Now note that I don't see this also happen in Indonesia or in East Asia. So it looks like even through these times, these cultures held on to the more pure form of, of, of Vedic religion, but also with the gods Shiva, Ganesha, Vishnu, which also we see, and Ambal, which we also see quite uh, prominent here in, in too. But not, uh, yeah, but it's not, I don't think that they had as much sort of, uh, confusion or change that the Indian society faced. So after Shankaracharya, again for another, I think, thousand years, things went on without too much trouble. But again, uh, during the 600s, 700s, from the Bhakti cult in the Tamil land, we, I, I come to hear about, I understand that the Jainas again uh, seem to have risen up quite, quite a lot. So it looks like Buddhism, it looks like Shankaracharya managed to unite Mimamsa, Nyaya, all that into Hinduism. But a few things like Buddhism, Jainism still continued. Buddhism seems to have gone out of India and become quite spread to Asia, China, Japan, uh, Cambodia, Indonesia, etc. In Indonesia, they seem to have united Buddhism into Vishnu practice and they have the Shiva Buddha, uh, I, Shiva Buddha split of Hinduism. So around the 600s, we start to see that the Jains have again sort of uh, become prominent and we also from the Rajatarangini of Kashmir, it's also sort of you get a sense of how much infighting there was amongst the Hindu kings and Buddhism also takes root in Nepal. So, uh, looks like there is another sort of wave of decline of Vedic religion. And uh, then the Bhakti movement, especially in Tamil Nadu, this is countered by the Bhakti movement. But the North India, uh, does, that does not happen. And uh, then, the, then the Islamic wave seems to have come again, come later to North India. And then we are taken over by the sort of uh, brutal, brutal religion of Islam. And again, so this continues the religion of Islam for another 600, 700 years. And, uh, and uh, then later the colonial uh, slavery begins. And uh, that continues another 300 years. And then it's literally a thousand years of um, not just decline of Vedic, and that's long gone, but just decline of society. And, uh, and then we have what is called the independent India. And uh, did, did the Vedic religion revive with the independent India? Not really. So you can say that in some sense, Gandhism was a revival of the non-violence of Buddhism. And it, in some spirit, it, it sort of united, uh, united the subcontinent, not just the subcontinent, even in Asia, Gandhi has a good name, and even surprisingly in Britain now. Um, but you cannot say it was a revival of Vedic religion. Uh, there was a reformation of the malpractices that had crept into the religion um, through the times, uh, through Arya Samaj, through the work of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, etc. But it wasn't a revival of the traditional religion. Actually, the traditional Vedic religion um, hasn't really been revived till now. Most of our temples which were destroyed still remain destroyed, where a few have been built. So, we'll have to wait and see. I think the after a thousand years, I would call the 
uh, rebuilding of the Ram temple in Ayodhya as the first revival of uh, uh, Vedic religion after a thousand years. So while I would call the building of the Ram temple in Ayodhya as the first sign of revivalism of the Vedic religion after a thousand years in India, what happened parallelly in Asia was that I don't know, China, Japan went through a phase of self-hate after the colonial period. Uh, so while they managed to keep their culture quite tight and strong with a mix of their original religion, nature-based religion, which is similar to the Vedic, but not really Vedic religion, plus the Buddhism, they, seems to have, they seem to have gone into Japan westernization and China communism first and destruction of their own culture, then later now into capitalism. And how did Southeast Asia fare Vietnam, Cambodia, etc., Indonesia, etc., very poor, yes? The, uh, but parts of Islam stayed in, in, in Malaysia, Indonesia, and, uh, and they are taught something different, like um, they are taught that the Islam came through peace into these countries. Uh, but, um, but there's still a sort of connection to the roots because, you know, these are, for thousands of years, these, these lands have been lands of Hinduism, right? They have a strong connection to their deities and to the ancestors and, 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 and yeah, let's see. But then Bali is very special. Somehow uh, the Devatas have protected this island, I think primarily because of the Shraddha of their own people. So the three million people or four million people who are the Balinese are, are the genuine Hindu bucks. And I'm curious to see with all the uh, money-mindedness of the tourism business of the last 20-30 years. I'm curious to see if they are going to uh, self-destroy or are they going to find a way out. Peace to everybody.